This is a video on how to go about creating number 13 for your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360. Before we get started with that, one quick note if you are making number 12 is we can combine both of these bodies together. So there's a button up here called Combine, and when we click on Combine, we can click on this body and the other body and say we want to put this into one thing and say OK. And notice that that line kind of disappears. We don't have two separate things. So we're combining two separate entities into one entity with that object in number 12. So I kind of wanted to reference that before we went on to number 13. So taking a look at number 13, kind of a similar idea to what we did with number 12 in the sense that I just want to draw kind of an L shape. So again, we're going to count in two from here. That's our radius. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tall. Nine wide by seven tall. So let's create for ourselves a new plane and we're gonna go nine wide by seven tall so I'm gonna draw myself a line over nine and I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna draw a line that goes up seven so I'm gonna go seven and I'm gonna hit enter and click on my magnifying glass and go on ahead and zoom out just a little bit just give myself a little bit of room to work so when we look at this object here we're gonna come over two from the top and we're gonna come up two from the right hand side of number nine so I'm gonna grab a hold of my my line command here we're gonna come over a distance of two I'm going to right click and say OK. I'm going to go to my line command again. I'm going to come up a distance of two, hit enter, grab a hold of my line command one more time. And again, I'm going to reference this side. I'm going to drag it over. We see that blue line. I'm going to click and then just go on ahead and finish that part off and go to finish sketch. Maybe you can see what some of my line of logic is. Again, there's more than one way to create a part. You might say, I don't want to do it this way. I want to try some other way and that'd be perfectly fine. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go about just extruding this back a distance of four and giving ourselves a solid. So I'm going to go to extrude and I'm extrude back negative four and I'm going to hit enter. And in this case, we're going to have to do some fillets, but we're going to have different, you know, radii in this case, because you'll notice up here at the top, we have a radius here that's only going to be a radius of one. If I come over one, that's when this Stop, starts being tangent. If I come up one, that's kind of the north and this is kind of the west on the side. So in this case, we're going to go find our fillet command and we're going to click on these two sides and we're going to put in a radius of one and hit enter. And it's going to round off those two edges, kind of like we see right there. Now in this case, we're going to go about rounding off a radius of two. Remember, you need to count in from the side. So try to find that center mark and try to walk straight over to an edge. And in this case, our fillet radius will be two. So we have this edge right here and this edge right here. Two is our radius and we say enter. Now we want to put two holes on this object. So one thing we can do is let's go ahead and look straight down two dimensional at our top view. And we're going to come over to our hole command and it's going to ask us what surface and this is our surface and I want to kind of drag this over until it snaps and it'll kind of snap into place right about where we see that little center point right there and you can kind of see our line would line up perfectly in this case right where that edge begins where we started counting when we were creating our width dimension so we go back to our object here and the diameter is two we have a diameter of two our distance needs to be all and we're gonna say okay and you'll notice that we went ahead and we cut out that object just like that. It is perfectly concentric of the center point of our circle here to the center point of our arc here that was created. We have one other um, hole that we have to create here and we're going to use some reference dimensions. We're going to notice that this is two in from the side and it's two in from the back to that center point. So when we go to our hole command we want to say on this surface and it's going to ask us for two references. Our first reference is going to be this line on the side and we're going to put in two and automatically it's going to ask us for another reference and our other reference is back here we're going to click on this line and we're going to put in two and once again our diameter is two because these two holes share the same diameter and we're going to go back and we're just going to say okay and we now have two perfectly centered holes that line up perfectly with one another that will also be a diameter of two so the center point here and the center point here line up perfectly a way to go about checking that if you ever want to is you can try to draw for yourself a line try to find the center point of this circle it'll show up here and come over and you'll see the center point of that circle now we see a, di a distance of three we can go right back to our object and say from here one 
two, three. So we did go about creating this part correctly. It's kind of a quick and easy way to double check and make sure that your um, holes line up. If you did the dimensions correctly, you really should not have that problem. We want to go ahead and start about creating this little cut back here in the back. So let's grab a hold of our create sketch and we're going to click on this surface right here. And when we come in here and look at this object, we want to find the distance from the top here down to the center point of this arc. So we're going to draw a line off the top and we're going to come down a distance of two. So we're going to go to line and we're going to see that little triangle show up and that triangle means that you are at the center point of that line. We're going to click and drag down a distance of two and we're going to hit enter. We're going to go back to our object here. The diameter of our circle that we're going to draw is a diameter of two. We're going to click on our circle, we're going to click here, drag out, and we want to put in a diameter of two and we're going to hit enter. Now, when we come into the line command, we need ourselves our lines that begin kind of at the west and eastern portion on these sides that go straight up and over. So one thing I'm going to do when I go back into Fusion 360 is I'm going to click on the left-hand side over here when it snaps over here on the left, and I'm going to click, and I'm just going to drag straight up. Do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to click, and when I have this snap right here on the side, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag straight up. I want to reference this side over here because we want to create ourselves a little bit of a rectangle. I'm going to click here and I'm going to kind of just go ahead and change that off right there and just double check and make sure that we have tangency on the side. You'll see this tangent symbol shows up. That means that this line touches this arc and it does not go through. It only rests on its edge. It's going to tell me that it already exists and that's fine. This one right here, I want to make sure this is tangent to this. And notice how we didn't get a warning because this symbol wasn't over on the other side. So now we have ourselves a full we have two real sketches, two real profiles. We want to trim this out, but we wanted to make sure that we had tangency on both sides. We'll grab our trim tool and we will trim out this arc and this arc. We can go ahead and keep everything that's in the middle here. We're going to go to finish sketch. We're going to go to extrude. We're going to click inside. We really didn't need the surface at the top because it's viewing it as two, which is kind of nice, but in case we needed it, we could place that up there at the top. And we go to distance, we're going to go to all, and we're going to say OK. And we have now cut through that object. So you'll notice that we've used the hole command, we've used the fillet command, and we use some geometric construction tools with the tangent constraints to create that shape up there at the top. So this has been a video on how to go about creating your uh, part number 13 for your 20 ISOs project in Fusion 360.